If you walk down and... down through the area now, it feels like that. You see people and you're like, you're not from the area. Mate, a lot you know, of the most talented like... people there, you can go yeah. to Portobello Green or wherever, mm. they're yeah. there smoking crack or mm. doing whatever, <laughs> but they were the most yeah. talented and they mm. didn't get any, any opportunities. They didn't mm. give get given these platforms. Mm. But that's the talent, mm. like, if you, you know, mm. and it's, yeah. it's sad to see, but that's... It's the same with footballers. The amount of footballers growing up, we played at the bottom of Grenfell Tower. It was the only free communal space. It was called uh, Green Pitches. Mm. And the amount of um, the best footballers growing up, and they mm. ended up getting... Doing something else. Doing something else, yeah, stabbing someone, going to jail, getting yeah. mentally... Get, selling mm. drugs to support their family or to support themselves. The killer, killer, podcast. KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. That's another podcast. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, a, that's a more in-depth podcast. Ladies, Jam's Killer Keller podcast, live or direct. Central London, Central as you should be, could be one of the or dare to be. God damn it. Big shout out to everybody who's checked out the Television app. Graffiti Kings.co.uk inside the place. And uh, to join us on this fine morning, two gentlemen of a th- Three piece, four piece, three piece, maybe a hair piece. Depends where you where you're situated. In the West End of London, the West Sides is a band that I would say are uh, holding the flag for uh, UK rap combined with ska, reggae, punk in a live format. Uh, I don't say I've seen them live and they're fucking great. And to hear that they're in the West London area just tickled me with joy. Big shout out. Goldborns, Justin, Josh, how are we, people? Oh, right, right. How was that? How was that? It was good, man. It's a bit yeah, of freestyle. Yeah, you should work for us, man. <laughs> <laughs> you want a job? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, we that. need a manager, guys. <laughs> well, I thought I'd set it up because, you know, I think for street culture, mm. there are certain uh, overlooked um, uh, overspills mm. that out of fringes of street culture, where often it's like we go down this road of, well, this is the relevant street culture thing now. But the truth of the matter is, there are architects beforehand that you guys are now pushing through, you know, genres and areas like of punk and ska and reggae. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That for me, I'm like, yo, that is, that is, the buck stops there as mm-hmm. far as fucking street culture goes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, feel you. I think yeah. it's hard. People want to put you in a box. So yeah, it's, box, yeah. as much as it's great being influenced by different things, I think. Mm. I, for a lot of people when they can't put something into, oh, this is what you are. Yeah. It's a little bit of a mad one. But, I mean, it's been like that for years, you know, especially with labels and, you know, the industry. But I think now, kind of more than ever, if you don't fit one one genre, then we're like, whoa, mm. come on. Mm. But I think that's kind of, you know, part of our strength, really, that we yeah. have a few different genres, you know. Um, so then we attract a different audience, like from different sectors. Yeah, yeah. We've got people that, that are into hip hop, people that are into punk music and ska. And, mm. Mm. So yeah, fuck them. <laughs> Basically. Oh no, don't fuck them. I mean, the, uh... love them. Yeah. <laughs> love them. Love them. I mean, you know. We'll can, change. Yeah. <laughs> you can adapt. I'll do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> do anything. But that's kind of been the, the, the mantra of most artists up until the DIY, the new DIY of yeah. things like this, you know, like doing a podcast just in the middle of a, uh, of, well, a vast situation. studio. <laughs> yeah, it's a vast studio with know. Playboy bunnies in the back and, and a swimming pool and uh, yes. yellow M&Ms in the place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, these are, these are all things, though, that have become so uh, accessible, but there was a time where it really was the case, wasn't it? You yeah. couldn't just um, be yourself, heaven for fucking no. bid. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. Um We've, it's, it's been a blessing and a curse, I think that's yeah. the best way to say it. Isn't it? Well, because we're in charge, aren't we, really? You yeah. Know, we don't have to, you know... We can make the music bend. we want. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, 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 it shows all of our influences and... Define and your influences. Like what, what are your influences? Well, we're all kind of different. We all come from... Like, me and my mate Max, who's the drummer, we come from a more hip-hop background. Hold mm. tight, Max. And um, <laughs> I think Justin... I've been in bands for years, you know, know, learning my craft as a songwriter, Mm. doing shows. So we've merged our styles Mm. and it's just worked, really. Mm. Um, And then when Max, Max, our drummer, came in, it was like the final piece of a jigsaw. And uh, yeah, it's just that crazy sound live, kind of in a hip hop backbeat, Mm. 
with that scar thing and with Josh's moogie dub bass. <laughs> it just uh, mm. all seems to work. It shouldn't, should it? No, it I does. mean, it's quite natural and we all, you know, it was never intentional for mm. us to be in a band. I know Justin's been mm. in bands, but me and Max, we just make beats and play football and mm. just been out on the roads kind of thing more. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. So it's, and kind of football brought us together. Yeah. Really? Like we've all known each other since we had little kids. Obviously. And QPR, the finest football yeah. team in Sheffield Bush. Oh, yeah. <laughs> me and Justin went to primary school together and um, yeah. he got me down QPR one time. And yeah, you were like, it's fucking rubbish, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's the singing, the songs and yeah. the banter. I think that's what really got me into... Yeah, it's about the culture of Rangers more than the football. It's about, yeah. like, the, you know... And it's a family. A family um, you go around the country. We used to go home and away. Mm. So yeah. you go around the country watching QPR to places like Oldham and Stockport. And so you proper footy fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, yeah that was you know. the, I think you're my first footy fans that have been on the podcast. Really? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard to find the time these days but um, and the money, but yeah. well, no, we're still... It's hard to get down there anyway. Really. Yeah, yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, not without a face. Well, actually, that should Soon, be... Soon, ho yeah. hopefully, but it's yeah. a bit weirder, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, these are these are all very these are subject matters that mm. I've in delving into your music. By the way, hold tight. New release out now. Broken Homes EP. Come on, come on. By the way, that is Kenny on the front, a famous West London Labrador Grove face. Kenny Swindle, Swindles, Swindles. He used to be a stall holder on Portobello. Big QPR. Fan. fan slash casual and uh, Wicked. good mate of the band now. So yes. yeah, yeah. Wicked. Oh, so he's still around, huh? He's still around. Yeah. Got down the pig and whistle, Latimer Road. If yeah. you, <laughs> you that picture was taken outside the pig and whistle after many uh, a yeah, exactly. after about ten pints. This is this is real, Diebo, yeah, and this mm. is what I find totally intriguing about you guys. Um, you're local to me, local enough, and um, I actually found out from B Boy Documents, whole type B Boy Documents, who put me onto you guys. And your devotion towards the the uh, the area of West London, like you know, mm. we're talking Labbrook Grove here, we're talking Shepherd's Bush, we're talking Latimer Road, we're talking um, Portobello, all these areas that you, it's, it's a radius for those of you from outside of London or even outside of the UK. This is a radius within West London that has been home and privy to so much cultural diversities, music genres, overspill mm. of all types of. All types of art. Acting, arts, yeah. music, everything. And it's mm -hmm. just incredible. Yeah. It, some of the content that you talk about, the mm. topics that you raise, you know, in light of Grenfell, yeah. in light of, um, you know, the, 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 the pull on diversity and, mm. and the, the, the social commentary of the yeah. days, you know, yeah. you know, going back into your archive, which I did, I delved in, I was like, <laughs> yo, who's these guys? This is fucking great. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's real. It's like, you yeah, guys, yeah. You, take, you walk a very thin punk-esque line mm. of, we're going to say what we think or fuck you anyway. Yeah. Pretty much. Punk-esque, uh, hip-hop in a way is... is um, yeah, like we we are the community. It's like people mm. have said before, oh, you got the community in the video. It's like they're our mates and our family. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not like we've got yeah, in touch with people try. and come to the yeah. area because a lot of people see it like a zoo. They come mm. down as tourists and kind of like, oh, look at the look at the locals or look yeah. at Grenfell. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's we're born and raised there. Yeah. I was I grew up in Grenfell and at the bottom of Grenfell and that. So I think it's you're very also personal. taught to write about what you know when you're a kid and you start writing songs and this is what we know we're from here yeah and we you know just say say what you see and mm. write about your backdrop and where you're from and, you know growing mm. up the music was always there in our face like if you walk yeah. down the road there's a dub sound system and my mate my dad you know. was good mates so with people like lemmy so i always had punk around to a point okay i've got questions yeah stop <laughs> motorhead for life right yeah talk to me. so where did because like, this probably won't even go the fuck <laughs> i've just got loads of questions so did he used to live um on this road for a piece do you know I, I was too young um when my dad when he was knocking around my dad was probably in the so, early 80s or late yeah. 70s and like, uh, I don't 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 expose too much, but um, <laughs> please my, expose too much. <laughs> he he used to get his <laughs> my nan like my nan was a was his dealer, so he used to tell everyone get his <laughs> off. That's and, um, fucking yeah. incredible. So he I used to have people like that coming round, and but I was a little kid. You don't know who they are <laughs> until later on. My brothers or whatever be telling you, oh, do you remember when Lemmy used to come round? They'll be like, oh, you're too little because they're twelve years older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I never really got into punk music and stuff. I mean, until I was going QPR and then yeah. you'd hear like the Clash playing. London calling, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, that sounds fucking wicked. Like, yeah. what's that? I wanna... mm. 
and he found out that's the clash and Mick yeah. Jones is a QPR supporter too mm. All clicks in, and that kind of got me more into it and you know yeah. the history and you know but um yeah, it's like your yeah. DNA, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of like a West London thing. Yeah. They're very, very. And, um, yeah. Yeah. It's like as a kid, like you're told stories about the area, like this is where the Clash used to drink. This is where, you know, Lenny yeah. used to do this. So you learn and you're like, oh, God, I want to be part, like, be part of that. And yeah. Yeah. You start to, start to chip away and... Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a mad one. Yeah, like history. Mm -hmm. And there's, oh, mate, I've got so much, I've got so much fodder we could talk about here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there is, there's obviously the carnival yeah. side of things, and then there is this, Labrick Grove, as an area, it was home to, like the likes, likes of Hawkwind, yeah. and you know that more yeah. hipster seventies, seventies proggy, yeah. yeah, mad how that yeah, kind of clash kind of came in oh, and no. created this. It's a mad. It was a, it almost like Labrick Grove was like a front line in my mind. I yeah, well, in many ways, yeah. Yeah. yeah, not just a front line, front line, but mm -hmm. like a musical front line. Yeah, you know, um, Joe's Joe Strummer's first band used to play at the Elgin. Mm, that's so it. then before the Clash, and that's when he had long hair and he was a bit of a hippie. Mm. So it's that merging into punk and you know, yeah. I think punk in a way was born in West London. Yeah, well, you know, like in the States, that's where punk really started, but they weren't proper punk bands with long hair and all that. <laughs> and what are they called? The, um... Oh, Ramones. 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 Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, it's a London mm. thing, you know. It was kind of... It was a bit kind of... For me, when I had the Ramones, I liked the speed and the turnaround mm. of songs super quick. Yeah. I liked the chord, but, but there was something about that... It was almost like... Yeah. It's just a bit, hey, I wanna go, I Yeah, diner music. I had a kind of <laughs> yeah. diner thing going on. I think Johnny Rotten said that kind of like rich kids from the suburbs, like in a mum and dad's, you know, garages with a long hair. And it's just, it's not punk, is it? It's yeah, just yeah, more, yeah. you know, a good band. But yeah. but yeah, so, you know, West London and, you know, Labrick Grove has always been at the forefront of new music. Really, yeah, for sure. You know. Mm -hmm. And then came the hip hop. The hip hop. Mm -hmm. I had Scam, Graffiti Writer Scam, Hold Tight Scam, who's a West London native. I know, I've seen him up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, and he, yeah, he would cite living below Hawkwind mm. or above. And he used to be wow. the annoying kid that used to run around them every yeah, time yeah. they were high. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's mad. Cross culture. Yeah, like, like, yeah. Hawkwind and hip hop starting off. Yeah. There's people who don't even know who they are. But then yeah. the song will tell you, oh, you know that guy is... Yeah. Like, oh, right, yeah. yeah. You know, it was yeah. quite an innocent way of growing up. But yeah. it was kind of segregated in a way. But I think, like I say, I come from a more hip-hop background. Mm. And the hip-hop, reggae, ska-type sides, although they kind of got on with the punk, they were quite separate. Mm. Yeah. So I didn't really know all of these punk people. Yeah. Do you mm. know what I mean? And until Grenfell happened, and then um, I think they started having to bring in the other side of the community more because they right. are the voice yeah. mm. of the street. So then we started getting more opportunities after Grenfell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because we people... couldn't really get a gig before that, could we? No. You know, we tried to get shows around here, but they weren't kind of, you know, supporting artists from around here. No, they were support from you know, artists from out the area. Yeah. And so That is weird, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Really there weird. are plenty of... Lots of good artists coming out. Man, yeah. like Kilburn High Road is just littered with pubs. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's the only, you know, strip that I can think of <clears> in West <throat> London that you could probably do a crawl like yeah, you yeah. in Camden. Great times yeah. in Camden growing up as well. Yeah, yeah. Camden I've done a well. few, few shows in Kilburn in the past, yeah. Back Camden in and Kilburn, boy, yeah. yeah. The Camden shows can just get a bit, like, just get a bit much. Like, I've never done any there like myself. The toilet but, circuit um, and... Yeah. It's more great nights out, but... Yeah. Um, it's like what I said yeah. the, on the Skinny podcast, you know, well, we alluded to the fact that behind the, the Camden Curtain yeah. mm -hmm. is where the real action kind of oh, yeah, still happens, don't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did you guys form? When, when, did, this, when did this all begin? Oh, we've been making music for a few years, just me and you, like in your yeah. mum's basement, kind of. Well, we were in the pub once and then I played them a hip-hop beat that I made. Yeah. Um, I've worked with people like Loki and Swiss. Oh, like Loki. And, mm. um, Clash and Cough, all those type of people when I was younger. Mm. And then um, I was playing them a beat, you know, having a beer. And said, oh, send me that over, I'll put some guitar on it. And then the, on it yeah. So then the, literally later on that night, he sent me something. I'm like, fucking hell, that sounds yeah, really good. Like, Mad. So then, um, band. you know, it, it just, we did that a few times. And then we thought, yeah. look, this stuff's too good to not, not put sure, out there. Yeah. But then like, we did put a couple of tunes out and it was mm. kind of a bit too eclectic mm. for people. So then... um. After a while, I was in touch with my mate Max. He produces for a big rapper called Hectic, 
around mm. my, my manner. And I think I said to him, oh, dude, I've been trying to do this band thing. I might play some bass guitar. And he's like, oh, I've been playing drums. His dad's a big drummer, like a jazz drummer. Um, nice. I'm trying to remember his name now. John Stevens, I think. I can't his granddad. Okay. And um, so me and Justin were at the Tabernacle one night in Power Square and I got him to come down. And there's a drum kit there. They just let us use it whenever we want. Yeah, yeah. And he got on the drums. I was like, oh, my, I didn't know you could yeah. actually play the drums. Mm. And it was his own sound. It's not yeah. like he was copying. It had like hip hop elements, jazz, yeah. a lot of reggae. Mm. So yeah. when we started playing, we just kind of, it just happened. It's a bit of a light bulb moment, wasn't yeah. it? We were like, ah. Because before that, we were yeah. using kind of the backing tracks and NPCs. And it was good. Mm. But live, it's a bit like, you know, people were going like. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's no swing. It's quite regimented, isn't it? Boom. Yeah, which exactly. Is, it's, still, it's still sounding amazing, but mm. it's just not the same as having a real drama. The drums exactly. changed the whole thing, yeah. It, oh, man. It just made me, me play differently, and yeah. then you and him clicked with yeah. the bass. Yeah, and I found like a cheap drum kit on eBay or something mm. on Gumtree. We went and got yeah. it. And then it was just in my mum's bed. We made all our stuff in my mum's, in my bedroom at my mum's. And, so um, <laughs> and then I think Mick got in touch. Mick Jones watched us yeah. and. He's like, come down the studio. Yeah. Mad. And I was like, all right, how was that? How was that? How was it? A, a, a casual call from Mick Jones for you? And we had this gig, wasn't it? I think it was um, a gig under the. Uh, was it Acklam? It's Acklam Village, yeah. Portobello Road. And it was a rainy yeah. Sunday when I was just at home in bed, and then you yeah. called and said, "Do you want to do a show?" Yeah. In about two hours, and I went, "Not really." <laughs> Me, <laughs> but I came down, and it was pissing down. Everything you know, went wrong that could yeah. have gone wrong. We actually the sound. Did the worst set of our lives. Really. And as we were coming out, like I think Mick and Gary came up to us and they were like, oh, that was really good. That was like great. And we looked yeah. at each other like, that was terrible. Like, mm, and they said, no, we loved it. Like, come to come to the studio. Yeah. I want you to come down and work with us. Like, so, But before that, I think they got told about us by someone on the, the, the Sex Pistols. Yeah. Paul mm, Cookie, Cookie is the yeah. Sex Pistols drummer. Uh, Cookie. Yeah, mm. Cookie. So I bumped into him in a pub. I didn't know who he was. I think he's... Well, he's from around the area, isn't he? He's Bush. Yeah. Hammersmith yeah. or Bush. Bush. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. he was saying something about... The Sex Pistols. So I said, oh, one of my dad's old mates was the tour manager, Boogie. And he heard me. He's like, seeing as you said Boogie, yeah, was like, I was the drummer you. in the Sex Pistols. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, let's yeah. have a drink. So we had a pint, showed him a couple of our tunes, like thought nothing of it. Mm. And then he must have told Mick, oh, there's this yeah. band called The Goldborns. So if we weren't Madness. in that pub at that yeah. time having a pint, because when he turned up, we didn't mm. know, like, this, this van pulled up and his old guys kind of mm. came out and we were like, oh, look at these little guys. <laughs> and I said, do you want a pint? And we're like, yeah, go on. <laughs> but if we weren't in that pub at the time, then we mm. might not have got to it with Mick and we might not be sitting here with you. We... Yeah. Wow. So there you go. Yeah. West London folklore. And it goes yeah. to show, doesn't it, that it doesn't matter where you are in the world, like mm. to, you've got to be in it to win it and you've got, got to be out there. Absolutely. Yeah, you've got to be out there. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's like the shittest yeah. show. Yeah. And, you can just, yeah. and, then, hey, and then the yeah. strangest things happen. Mm -hmm. But you always hear stories like that, don't you? You know, when you watch those kind yeah. of Sky Arts, BBC yeah. Four, yeah. Yeah, I love them. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you really mm -hmm. cut your chops on learning how they used to really have the hardcore grind, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get anywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you just think, oh, I'm making good music, that'll yeah. be good enough, innit? No, no we learned that no. kind of earlier on. Yeah. Like, no, next. Mm. Yeah, trying to get, like, knocking yeah. at enemies, doing all these people, mm. and they got all these things, like, unsigned, under the radar. Mm. But it's all and then they're promoting people connected. that are already, like, getting millions of views and hits so it's, yeah. Yeah. there's not really anyone apart from people like Robert Elms and yeah. obviously Mick Jones taking us under his wing like it's, it's just all I think and you know from, how it is like, like, around here there's not loads of people from this area who've done well but like to support new music there's not a lot of or mm. not from around it but people that have come here and made their fame from the area they don't tend to give back mm. you know but Mick does and exactly Mick does and yeah, it seems like one. he really championed some uh, well, yeah yeah it's just pure. It comes from a pure place. Mm. Whereas everyone else, it's it, well, a lot of people, it's just like it's like crabs in a back bucket or whatever, mm. isn't it? Yeah. And it's mm. like they should be... Should be helping out. Yeah. Especially if you're coming from the manor. Or come, like, it's a lot of people taking and giving nothing back. Yeah, yeah. I kind of... You know, I mean, this could... This may come across as spicy. And it's, <laughs> my intention is not. Because it happened. Oh. and It happened and I felt, I felt kind of bad for them at the same time that it happened at the during the whole year of COVID, but around here in, in West London, we were championed as the Brent 2020 of culture. Oh. Um, uh, I don't know if you saw that. This was a thing. I didn't see that. Brent was seen oh. as the 2020 place of culture. Um, a what lot does of, that even mean? <laughs> well, it, so each year, this, the, 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 the money mm. <laughs> from the culture fund 
gets injected into areas and boroughs across the country. Didn't see any of it. Well, you wouldn't because it was 2020 and everything was locked down, right? So there was oh. no events or anything. You know, so I kind of felt for them in that respect. But, I, but at the same time, yeah. um, you know, egos aside, because it, it, it was it's totally cool and it really didn't trouble me at the time neither. But in retrospect, I was like, yo, you didn't know about it? You yeah. guys didn't know about it. And I w- only kind of... I was only drawn to it because somebody who was a friend of mine right. just contacted me. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, man. So I've been doing this podcast here for the last three years. And like, I didn't even know about it. So, and it's so, it's, I think you're right. It's very selective. What people want yeah. you to believe is the, mm. the thing they're champ. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, yeah. it's handed out to the right people. Yeah. Mm. That are usually linked to that organisation in the first place. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a weird one, Brent. I didn't hear about all that. Well, there's plenty... Oh, I, obviously, I, I, 20, yeah. Again, like by Maxilla, where we're from, there was all these studio spaces um, under the Westway. I don't know if you know about the Westway and it's given to the community, all of these spaces. Re- really? So but that's... Yeah, RBKC okay. have been so corrupt, they've been giving it to people like pret and there was never supposed to be any big places like that. It's all supposed to be for the community and yeah, community wow. run, but this RBKC basically took over with the Westway Trust. Yeah. And... Um, Pre Grenfell, there's all these studio spaces, and they were given all to like rich kids and people that don't really need mm. the funding. Or it was just, it was all very hush hush. Yeah, you know how it is. That's, mm. that's how and they if do you it. Walk down and down through the area now. It feels like that. You see people, and you're like, you're not from the area. Mate, a lot you know, of the most talented like, people there, you can go yeah. to Portobello Green or wherever. Mm. They're yeah. there smoking crack or mm. doing whatever, but <laughs> mm. they were the most yeah. talented, and they didn't mm. get any any opportunities. They didn't mm. give get given these platforms, mm. but. That's the talent, mm. like if you, you know, mm. and it's yeah. it's sad to see, but that's it's the same with footballers. The amount of footballers <laughs> growing up, we played at the bottom of Grenfell Tower. It was the only free communal space. It was called uh, Green Pitches, mm. and the amount of um, best footballers growing up, and they mm. ended up getting doing something else, doing something else, yeah, stabbing someone, going to jail, getting yeah. mentally get, selling mm. drugs to support their family or to support themselves, and mm. it's it's just sad seeing all of that talent, mm. all of that homegrown. Go down the drain, basically. Because they're not yeah, nurtured. Because they're not cultivated. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't have the. We don't know about these things or about these spaces that are given. Mm. Like the people that go to nice schools or their parents are yeah. well up, or you know, what I mean, you come yeah. from not yeah. broken homes. But you have know, funding as well. Yeah, so you don't get told about funding. But a lot of us when it ends and you haven't applied for it. It's yeah, like, your dad's not. But my dad was in jail a lot of my life or whatever. So you know, your mum hasn't got the time to be mm. finding out about these spaces. And yeah, she's yeah. working yeah. two shifts a day or whatever. Mm-mm. So it's um, it's just you know it's, mm. the opportunities are there. I think they're just given to the wrong people. Yeah, mm. it's like there is my people like oh, there's no money these days. There's tons of money. Yeah, there, there is loads of money. Do you yeah. know what I mean? There it's really just kept is. In a, it's yeah. just kept in a small yeah circle. Yeah, like if you look what, at the whole yeah. kind of you know, music industry in general, they say there's no money left now, but there's a lot of money. But they're actually going like to Brit schools and drama schools, mm. and they pump the cash in there, yeah. like almost to groom them to bring through the next pop stars yeah. that are like Ed Sheeran and like the rest of them. Mm. So there is cash, but again, it's been funneled yeah. to you know, drama schools, and they go, look, we've got another carbon copy of James yeah, Bay. Exactly. Is, that, is that a security thing? Because maybe there's there's aspects of. Um, maybe there's aspects of Oasis or Sex Pistols that people, mm. they, they, yeah, they're high they don't, just don't, they don't want to repeat. They don't yeah. want another one. They're like, Which is fucked. Is, I remember yeah. that band. Do you remember that Dude. band, The View? Yeah, it's from mm. up, um, up in Aberdeen or something. Aberdeen, really. yeah. Oh, wicked, yeah. Aberdeen. Scruffy, like, oh, yeah. Aberdeen. <laughs> they don't want none of that. They don't want working no, class they people. Want nice. They don't. They don't. They like the image, yeah. or they like to be safe, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Your, oh, yeah. you're a little bit too for us. Like they like yeah. people that yeah look like it or whatever, but they're not. It's like the final fake. Yeah. One that's that's also about targets because they got all these targets to me, and if they've got this mm. artist that sold loads of records, yeah. If, if they get another one that's just the same, it's going to sell loads of records. Mm. Mm. And then the general public are the ones going, okay, yeah, sounds mm. good. Yeah. Or kids, you know, a lot of. Mm. So. Yeah. Uh, so how? What? Mm. So what's the because obviously you've got the mm. new music and this, you know, for every person that watches this, yeah. you've got to check out the Goldborns. And, <laughs> like, what's the what's your plan of attack? What's your 
com- how, what's your what's your power moves to combat these? We're these... Get them from the bottom. Yeah, and do them up there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> chisel our way up. Um, I don't Ouch. know. It's hard. You could easily get in your feelings and start calling out people. There's a lot of people. Yeah. That I think you're the band think... to totally do that. I might. Yeah, have. and it will people happen. Resisted from it. It will happen. But you yeah. know, when you're being really nice and you come to a lot of these people, you bump into an area. It's a small area. Yeah. Mm. So I bumped into a lot of people. And you, the first one, two, three times, you're being nice and humble. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, check me out. You know what I mean? Look at this, like, fan of your work. Yeah, yeah. Like, but after the second or third time, yeah. And they're not even giving you the, the shine, the moment yeah, of the day, yeah. and you, you start questioning yourself. You're like, hold on, no, this is actually yeah. the best piece of music I've ever made, and compared to especially what's out there, mm. it's it's frustrating. Yeah, it's and there's only though. so many times you're gonna be nice, so you end up just being like end up banning someone from the area or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, it's it's just really, really yeah. frustrating because these people bang on about Labrook Grove and mm. all of this stuff and it's like, hold on. Like, I think everyone's just getting a little bit, was it a smoke and mirror? Like, yeah. mm. So um, anyway, that will eventually happen, but I think just trying to focus on the music yeah. and we've got enough well, We've done everything ourselves everything, so. as well. Like this, we actually produced ourselves. Yeah. And yeah, we engineered it ourselves. So I think the next step is to work with someone, with like a producer who can take it to the next level. Mm. You guys maybe graph open as well. Doors. Like you guys, we, yeah. You guys graph. We've got some connections yeah. in the graph. A lot of like people. Yeah. He said, and I said, or whatever. I knew okay. there's a little kid around here. Yeah, he passed like the other yeah, year. That's um, right. That's right. Hate um, obviously yeah. passed away, and that. there's yeah. a lot of a lot of graphers we know. Yeah. And grew up with like we didn't do it yeah. ourselves, but you know what I mean. They I were mean, on, this on one the train tracks and... was was a funny one because we did it, but then we didn't want anyone to steal steal the idea. Yeah. So then we went back the next day, we over. to go and paint yeah. it, but then it was gone already. Someone painted over it. There you go. That's so. all we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like shit. Uh, uh, and then you got Lee Scratch Perry. Yes. Woo! Yeah. Like some serious mm. bits and bobs going on here. Life mm. in the bunker. Life and yeah. a bunker, so, and it is a bunker. That's that's Mick Jones's studio, and it's yeah, very small, about the same size as this. Very hot, there's no aircon. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's just how we like it. Sweat, sweat <laughs> dripping down. So work for your money. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah, that's the best shit. Yeah. And mm. that's what that, that's the stuff dreams are made of. Surely, it's just yeah. boom tish, just yeah. get in. And I think we only did about two two takes of each track because we were just like. Mm. Mm. Such a rush, eh? Get out in hindsight, yeah. would have liked to do each track and not do it live. And or yeah. would you? I think it's, it's got that rawness because we did yeah. it live, but when looking back, we're like, eh, but that just does, yeah. That's how it is, isn't it? And I think some people might be like, I don't know, they don't really get that it's live because it sounds like a studio <clears throat> record, it does, yeah. So mm. a lot of people that hear it and they'll think that's a studio album, you've done the, everything on a separate tape. Did you, did you put live on there as a kind of protective? Uh, sheen to suggest that yeah yeah because we don't want people to judge us based on the quality of the production more of the performance um probably the production i reckon product yeah. yeah i mean we, we're quite proud of our live set yeah, yeah yeah so i think we originally we just wanted something like we're in a rush and like mm. i say it was kind of like if we do it as live hopefully mm. people will know yeah because again i saw you at the hundred club yeah yeah. yeah yeah i mean i was mm. reasonably was inebriated but i was yeah. successfully drunk but yeah I was supporting um, Glenn Mallock from the Sex Pistols. Which is just fire. like a sea of you know, sex, sex Pistols fans going like that. Yeah. And it was a mm. bit tough, but after a few songs, they were loving it. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, come, you know, shit. Did I the hardest people yeah. to cry, man? Yeah, yeah that true. Was, yeah. That and was we've got a, um, a, my good friend, well, Kaiser, the rapper Kaiser. Yeah, yeah I saw you doing track with Kaiser, hold tight Kaiser. We've got an EP, yeah. EP coming out this month called People Trying to Succeed Daily. People yeah. like PTSD. He's one um, of the, he, uh, in my humblest opinion, he's mm. one of the most honest, honest artists. Oh man, I was saying yesterday, what my favourite pretty much ever UK rappers are Skinny Man and, and Kaiser. Yeah. You know, mm. like I think they're True. just flawless. Like, so he's a nice bloke as well. Yeah. Reality yeah, yeah. music and yeah. So it helps. And yeah. he was in my brother's class in, in school. So yeah, I've, yeah. he's always been like a big brother to me growing mm. up in the area. And um, yeah, like he's, he's helped me get through a lot and we made this together. And um, it's, it's very personal, like all of our mm. stuff. It's our heart. It's quite. It's like exposing yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's. Um, I think that's why we don't do a lot of music because when we do something, it has to be proper. Yeah. You know, that's not a bit too cheesy. It's got to be from the heart. Mm. No, it's interesting you, you know. say that because sometimes it's like a, um, an explosive waiting to go off. Mm. And sometimes you don't want to. You don't want to keep on hitting the ceiling with ideas. Yeah. You just want to go and explode and then come out and think that was good. Mm. Yeah. 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 yeah that was good, done that. 
That's kind of like how I like to work, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we get people saying, you know, you, you should do more stuff, you should put more stuff out, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know, it just doesn't feel as special if we just put something out every two weeks. I mean, we could. No, no, we don't really out, have the time. Like, I've got no. a couple of kids and stuff. We've got jobs, we've got mm. bills to pay. So mm. um, like, it's amazing going into the studio and we've got, now you've got to this point, you get people offering you to use the studio for free. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> things yeah. like years ago, we didn't have yeah. the opportunity. So because of that, we are able to, to make more music. He's, but, um, actually, he's actually like, you're, you're on the run right now. You're on the ladder of... Feels, it feels mm. like you're. I mean, nigga, I'm just stepping in. And you guys are just in, being introduced now. Um, <laughs> feels like something's crazy. starting to happen a bit more. Yeah. I think since since we bought this out, it's kind of you know people are going, oh, okay, you got tunes mm. a bit, and you can play as well because it's live. Mm. Yeah. So hopefully, if things start to get moving a bit more, mm. and I think the, the authenticity, do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, like really doing what we're talking about, and like our community backs us a hundred. So mm, a lot of people, if you're yeah. trying to be a bit of a vulture, culture vulture, mm. you get called mm. out. Yeah. But there's no one that would call us out because we're really, really there. Yeah. We're there every day. Like yeah. we're doing more for the people. You know what I mean? Do more for others than you do for yourself. See, real shit. And, you yeah. know, this is the real. This is the real yeah. protest music. Yeah, this kind is of. The, yeah, this yeah, is the much. real shit. You know? mm. The West London sound and and you know local local as fuck. Local lads, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Anyone quite, says tabernacle yeah. and drums in the same sentence, that's my fucking seal of approval. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we, you know, we grew up here when it was even worse than it is now. And I say worse, mm. I mean, yeah, it was, you know, it was interesting. Well, it was one of them you places, know, was, especially like my brothers and my dad and my grandparents were growing up. It was like, oh, you're from Labrick Grove. Oh, yeah. sorry. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because it was the slums of London, yeah. wasn't it? Like mm, Labrick yeah. Grove was literally, there was a bomb site. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I've seen um, the pictures, man. The, yeah. the stories are the grim, man. My family yeah. stories and history is grim, but that's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. And that's and how the carnival was, was like just like a playground for us, though, as a kid, wasn't it? Yeah, it's no, like, it was great time. Yeah, it was great carnival, time. It's just, very privileged. Yeah. It's very privileged, but yeah. it comes from a very unprivileged mm. history, and Ooh. that's that's probably the nearest yeah. to saying it, isn't it. It's like. So I think in a way yeah. with these tracks we're trying to keep it going and keep the kind of you know tradition yeah. going mm. of you know, the area before yeah. it all gets wiped away. I definitely estate feel agents that. and mm. fucking you know, bougie pubs. Actually, I can't even get into it. I can't. <laughs> it's actually, I mean, pop my narrative right here is I'm a conduit. I'm merely a conduit. You know. Um, yeah. <clears> and all is good because when you put it into yeah. the energy of this, then it, it yeah it can only uh, it can only do good. Um, there is a, a message in each one of the tunes and. Mm. I feel like, yeah, the connectivity, and I think it's only because I'm on the ground and I'm so close to it. Mm. I really feel like there is a sound yeah. that is part of West the, London, the, the environment. Of, yeah. And I don't know why yeah. it hasn't been, you know, um, taken and run with, or anyone hasn't mm. done it up till mm. now like you guys have for this generation. Mm. That's pretty bonkers. Mm. I think with a dub and reggae kind of um, vibe, a lot of people don't really want to touch it. But I think yeah. we're a bit like, fuck it, you know. Um, well, someone at NME said about Broken, one of the songs, it's like, oh, it's a bit too scar for me or something. Mm. Oh, what are you talking uh, about? Because like, like, there's one scar music, influence yeah. or the offbeat guitar. Well, yeah. you hear the offbeat and you think that's all scar. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit mad and these yeah. are the people that are giving people opportunities, but... But it's back to that you box know. thing, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah. No. yeah. Scar? Yeah. Pop. yeah. No, no. And then you get to a certain point, so you get half a million views or you, you break that barrier. Mm. And then they'll be like, oh, let's support you. Yeah. It's like, we don't need your support now. We needed yeah. your support. We're, yeah. we're broken. Yeah. We've got nowhere. Do you know what I mean? That's like, like Robert not... Elms has been great with us because yeah. he actually gets our sound. Like, he gets the whole, you know, West London vibe. Mm. And he just supports us and he's played our tracks a lot. Explain mm. Robert Elm. So Radio One? BBC London. London, okay. Uh, and he's a West London boy, he's from around here. Uh, and he's also a QPR fan, funnily enough, mm -hmm. so that helps. Um, mm. But yeah, he just gets the <laughs> tracks and he gets what we're trying to say in the music. Mm. Um, and he's, you know, we've got a lot of fans, I reckon, because of Robert Elm. Yeah, definitely, we owe a lot so, to him. Um, his, his support is... Yeah. The fourth so, goal born, yeah. maybe. You know? yeah. it's that a lot. It's out. That's what happens yeah. when you find a fan that's like super on it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, good old Robert. So what's the mm. plan with this? Now you got this now this is popping. What's the plan? Mm. What's the plan? We've got some yeah. new music coming. 
And this time we won't be live because we've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was interesting, trying to sort out a yeah. live EP. So yeah, we've got some new tracks that we think are even stronger than these. Mm. Uh, we're hopefully going into the studio with a producer. Uh, we can't really say who it is yet, uh-huh. but he's proper. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we've got some new music coming. Hopefully mm. going to get it in more people's faces. Mm-hmm. Same old thing, you know, talking about you know where we're from. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, more political, go, go hard. Yeah. I just feel like, yeah, yeah. why the fuck not? Yeah. Why, you know, throw out, throw out the pole and see who salutes it. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? Therefore. I mean, you know, like it will scare scare some people away, but, you know, who That's, cares? Yeah. Well, they're already away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In fact, they're so far yeah. away, they'll come back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, they might just boomerang <laughs> back around. Yeah. Like, yeah. Guys. Yeah. But you have some yeah. people who get a bit scared because of what we talk about, like um, either robbing or selling drugs or... Like the new one, and they, I remember someone I won't say any names, but they they were like, "Oh, but about changing the lyrics because what you're talking about." And it's like, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, like we're not just because it's not going to get radio play or something. Yeah. We're not going to change. Yeah. Mm. You can radio the song. It's not like with the B and yeah, it's no compromises. Them, and um, now don't get me wrong. Like with, I'm tired of working my ass off as a gardener and everything, yeah. but yeah. making the best music's more important do you know what I mean yeah. you start changing the lyrics to, to try and get on radio like, yeah. Oh, yeah. can't really start doing that but, well, um, yeah. because what I, I um, yeah big shout out to Doc Scott drum and bass Metalhead's original he was touring the states and the, the compromise there were, well there was none he was like no because mm. if we started diluting drum and bass yeah. before it's even got over yeah. you wouldn't have a culture like you got now and it's the same yeah. thing with any music well it's mad you say metal it was in Goldie mm. part of metal, metal. Yeah, yeah, and he, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, pop, he posted that our video yeah. and oh, then yeah. got us like hundreds of got fans and views fans, yeah. and I was like mate That's thank you guy. so much like, people like Goldie music. get it don't they because he's real oh, he's like, mate. Kind of it makes yeah, such realness. like that's that means more to me than yeah. do you know what I mean getting yeah, all over the radio. Yes, yeah. that's that's yeah. my man. Um, yeah, and he actually t- t- supported uh, well the three I think it was three shows um, with Sex Pistols at the at Brixton Academy. No oh, it was him and Scratch shows. Perverts. Yeah. Wow, it's a bit random, isn't it? It was Sex Pistols. Wow. I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and very similarly to your uh, Glenn Matlock. <laughs> yeah, wow. there, mate. there was a lot of that going on. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guys, it was just like, God, know. those shows mm. were a bit mad, you know, the Sex Pistols mm. ones at Brixton. Oh, I watched them on YouTube. Oh, I've seen them. F- great. Oh, well, like a riot, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a Steve Jones fan as well. I can't, I'll, I'll listen to the yeah, radio show. Great, yeah, he's great, isn't he? Yeah, he's mm. great. Yeah, no. We'd love uh, to get in touch with him. Jones. He's in America, LA or something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure that's relatively Jones's easy. jukebox. That's it. Yeah, if you're yeah. there having drinks with Paul mm. Cook, I'm pretty sure that's not too... <laughs> yes, yeah. something we should do. We should ain't well, too hard. More, isn't it? yeah. Yeah. Give me the phone. I'll call. <laughs> yeah, you know, ship is bush boy again. You know, yeah, like I'm telling you, man. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, next thing you'll be going out to LA and just being on a radio Ooh. show. Imagine me, Jonesy yeah. Jukebox. Yes, you know, look, they, these are all now. Come on, Jonesy. Well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although he's a Chelsea fan, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're still friends <laughs> for now. And as far as hip hop goes, so mm. uh, you know, you came out through and through. You saw me play <clears throat> a deal real when right? I was a kid. I was the youngest one there. I was like yeah. twelve. A couple of my mates we used to go down, and we were the, the kids like Doc Brown be hosting. Yeah, I'll type you'd Doc be Brown. on stage, mm-hmm. low key. Loads of people manage a couple of people yeah, like manage. that. Oh, whole time manage. I've forgotten a lot of names, but there was some <laughs> wicked nights. I think most deaf came once. Kalashnikov yeah. packed it out once. It's hard to think it was free. It was free and it was about half the size of this place, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. on another level Where of like Carnaby Street. Carnaby or something. Street. Yeah. Kanye West yeah. jumped in and yeah, well, with a track. That. Right. Yeah, that was some. Yeah, no some way. great nights, mate. It was bonkers. Um, that yeah. was, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Listen, boys. Thanks so much. No, for thank you. So oh, much much before we, uh, so yeah, Bella Pepper mm. as well. This is see, these boys ain't playing. Check that out. <laughs> you can get it online, <laughs> right? Shit. Um, only in Labrick Grove at the moment. You will be able to get it on Amazon in the next month or two, and that. But, um, Amazon, yeah. uh, just got proper labels. But if you're ever in Labrick Grove, JD's Caribbean, uh-huh. um, Portobello Shack, mainly just look out for the Caribbean shops and that. And most yeah, of them. Yeah. <laughs> this is you. This is all. <laughs> that's all me. Yeah, that's all me. See, yeah, hopefully, source, hopefully Justin will do a theme tune for it soon. We'll do it together. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Something there. <laughs> yeah, but it's very hot. But it's the flavour's yeah. worth yeah, it. Yeah, I'm all so. about that, man. Yeah. I'm all about that. Listen, this is this is proper 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 local business. All right, West London's finest. Come on, trust me. You, you are. Check it out. <laughs> yeah. the gold bonds are in effect. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jay. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Wicked. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Hold tight. Big shout out to Max as well. 
Mate, we are well, like anyone's out of fashion, people. You stay lucky now. Killer Keller podcast, Dragon with Eight Vengeance. Don't talk to anybody, I wouldn't. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> that was good fun. That's nice yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. We should do more, though, shouldn't we?